Good morning. Is this working? Good.
Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning as we gather together in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Welcome to all who are here and welcome to all who are watching online here this morning as well. Our worship service is on this fifth Sunday in Lent and we continue to mark our journey with Christ on the way to the cross. We begin our time of worship together this morning with our brief order of confession and forgiveness. I ask you to please rise with me as you are able. And the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all our sins. In Christ, your sins are forgiven, and by God's grace, salvation is yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rejoice together with our gathering song, As the Winter Days Grow Longer.
Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is from Jeremiah 31st, start the verses 31 to 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the last of them to the greatest, says the Lord, 
for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. We read Psalm 51, verses 1 to 12, responsively. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your steadfast love, in your great compassion, blot out my offenses. For I know my offenses, and my sin is ever before me. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my wickedness. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. The second lesson is from Hebrews 5, verse 5 to 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed to be the one who said to him, You are my God, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the day of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been designated by God, a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel for this fifth Sunday in the season of Lent is taken from the Gospel of John, this from chapter 12, beginning with verse 20. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. And now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice 
came from heaven, saying, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Now this crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I'd like to call the Sunday school and the youth to the front, please. And this time, if you could come on on this side over here. Here, well, actually, we'll, we'll go right in the middle here so you can all see very well. So come and uh, have a look around. So I have something this morning. In this, in this pan here, I have a bunch of seeds. And Jesus today talks about a seed falling into the earth and dying so that it could bear a lot of fruit. And these are flower seeds. So the fruit that it's trying to produce is more seeds. But when a flower blooms, it has a lot of seeds. But first, that one seed has to get into the ground. Now, these, what I'm hoping to have happen here is that when we put these seeds in this little pot here, by the time Easter Sunday comes, we should be seeing some shoots coming up out of the ground from these seeds. So the timing is just about right to be able to see that. But how will it get its light? How will it get its light? We'll put it in the light, and we'll make sure we water it along the way, okay? And, and I can take care of that, you know, being the great gardener that I am. Um, <laughs> We'll, we'll do that. So if you, each one of you can go in here and take a seed, okay? Just take a seed. Oh, here's a big one for you, Nate. For you. There's <laughs> just grab, grab some of these seeds. And what you want to do is just take these seeds. A spiky one? Yeah, you can take a spiky one or you can take one of these round ones. There's all sorts of seeds there. And all you have to do is take it and push it in about the length of that part of your finger. About a f your, your fingernail down like that, okay? I want it, I want it deep in. You want it deep <laughs> in there? Okay, there we go. We'll put that in there too. And you can take more than one because some of these seeds are very <laughs> tiny. I want so we'll put them like that. I'm going to take a couple. Okay. Put them in there and cover them up. Okay, we'll just pat them down gently now. Okay, everybody, did everybody get a chance to put a seed in there? I put like a billion. Okay, oh, a billion. <laughs> That's a lot of seeds. Boy, this thing is just going to just burst open here. Okay, that's enough seeds there now. Okay, we got that? Good. We'll cover them up, pat them down gently, and then we'll take care of them. And over the next two weeks, we'll put them in the sun, get some water on there, and let... Nature do its job. And we'll remember on Easter Sunday when we pull it out just what Jesus said because he, he was t telling people that kind of like a seed pushed into the ground like this, the seed, has to, the seed has to die in order for the plant to live. And we're the plant. And so Jesus is telling them that he's going to have to die. Okay? I'm digging a mini hole. Oh, not for, no, we don't need that many because they'll just... <laughs> we, that, that'll be good. Okay. <laughs> it will be good. It, it'll be just fine. Okay, these seeds will be extra for another, another plot of dirt, okay? Okay, so let's pray. Gracious God. Uh, oh, Oop, there they go. Oh, no. Okay, well, okay, there'll be some flowers growing out of the carpet on Easter Sunday. Yep. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you. Uh, for the gift of Jesus and that he willingly is going uh, the distance to the cross so that like a grain of wheat he will suffer and die but others will live all of us will live 
Now pray your blessing on our day today. Amen. Okay, away you go. Thanks for coming up, you guys. Be sure to water those. We'll, we'll water that. Yes, we'll do that. Why, why does he think that I'm not going to water it? Karen, can you water that for me? Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, for word of scripture on this day, we give you thanks and pray that your Holy Spirit touch our hearts with these words that we may hear and understand. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Well, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Passover approaches. Jerusalem is becoming a crowded house. It is perhaps, if not the chief celebration in the Jewish calendar, then pretty close to it. It is a great festival. And it's not just a one-night thing like sometimes we suppose Passover to be. It's a week-long celebration. A celebration that remembers the redemption of Israel. The freeing of Israel through the work of Moses. God's outstretched and mighty hand that brings the Israelites from slavery into freedom and makes of them a nation and gives to them this promised land. Along with that celebration is the celebration of the first harvest, where they bring offerings of barley, wheat, to thank God for the blessing of the harvest. And it is into this, into this atmosphere that Jesus and his disciples walk and amongst the many, many thousands of people are a few Gentiles, Roman citizens, here called Greeks. And they want to see Jesus too. In all likelihood, they may well have been some of those converts to Judaism from the Gentile world, and they have been hearing what everybody else has been hearing about this itinerant preacher that is not just a preacher, but perhaps a prophet and, and just perhaps Messiah. And they want to see if this could be, and they want to see Jesus. But in the story in the Gospel of John, Jesus does not seem to consent. In, uh, in, in fact, he talks about this whole thing being the time. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Because, very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it does, if it dies, it bears much fruit. And here we see the shadows of the cross beginning to loom over the life of Jesus. We begin to see the shadow looming over the disciples and even their resolve to follow Jesus no matter what. And Jesus, in a way, warns them by saying, those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And therein lies the message of the one who is that grain of wheat that must die. In order for not just the disciples and not just for those people of the time, but for this message to live and breathe and find its place in the world and to be spread. A message of God's love 
that is so resolute in its path that even if it means the cross, God's love, word made flesh, will go that distance. Even, even suffer and die for the sake of those who would nail him to that cross. Even for those And it will come. It will come. But if you wish to follow Jesus, be prepared and be forewarned. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. And then he talks about hating your life in this world and we wonder how much can we hate our own lives in this world if, on the other hand, the only real commandment that Jesus leaves his disciples in the Gospel of John is that the one to love each other in the fashion of that Old Testament law to love your neighbor as yourself. If you do not love yourself, how can you possibly expect to love your neighbor how much can you love your neighbor if you hate yourself? But a part of the problem of these words is the English translation and Jesus' use of this over-exaggeration called hyperbole. In comparison, in comparison to the love and the dedication that we have to Christ whom we follow, all else pales, all else pales in comparison so that it would look as though we hate everything else but Christ. But not only that, if we follow Christ, the hating of self means the giving away of self to the one that we follow. And it is Christ to be able to say in our faith that we follow Christ means that we, like Christ, become selfless. And we can do that in Christ because we know one thing for certain, that because we follow Christ with our whole heart and mind and our being, and live as closely as we can the way of Christ in this world. Our life is kept already in eternal life. We have the assurance and the promise by God through Christ that those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. That is the difference that it makes when we settle by giving our life to Christ, following Christ. And all of those words that Christ talks about in this, this wonderful gospel of John are about giving ourselves fully to the one that we follow. In everything that we do, whether we are at work or at play, whether we're asleep or whether we're awake, we give who we are, what we are, and all that we are to Christ, to follow him, to be his people. And Paul, Paul later in his letter to the Romans, would write in chapter 6 that, that if we're baptized into Christ, that, and I paraphrase here, that makes all the difference. Because being baptized into Christ means we are baptized already into his death. And Paul writing this decades later 
So being baptized into Christ then for Paul meant that if we are baptized into Christ, into his death, most assuredly we are baptized into his resurrection and his life. And we already have it. And so when we hear those words about hating one's own life, Losing our life so that we may gain it. It is, it is in faith that we can say these things. In faith that we understand these things. And in faith that we follow willingly. And it does not mean that each of our lives ends on a cross like it did for Jesus. For some in that early church, it did, but for others, it did not. But it is about the selfless living that Jesus gave the example of. Shall I say to God the Father, says Jesus, to stop this? The hour has come. No, no. My soul is troubled, he said. Should I say, Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then the voice, that thunder comes from out of nowhere and everywhere. Because that is the nature of heaven itself. And the voice The voice of God says, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. And so glory, unlike, unlike the glory that we seek on this earth. And some of our rulers would love to have this kind of glory. Unlike that, Jesus' glory is now equated with the cross. And over these next two weeks, we will see where Jesus walks after this moment, knowing full well that his glorification is consummated, is established, and must be kept in the journey to the cross. Now is the judgment of this world, and now the ruler of this world will be driven out. Christ goes the distance. Perhaps out of necessity, but not for his own necessity, ours. Because what we cannot do, he does. And what he does is our salvation. Over these next two weeks, let us begin to think about these things. For the grain of wheat will soon be planted in the ground. Amen. Let us join together in our hymn of the day. If you would all please rise with me as you are able. Hymn number 925 in the All Creation Sings hymn book, hymn book Beautiful Things. And uh, thanks to our music leaders for leading us through this one.
Now we have the installation of our church council members. And if I could ask them to come forward. And it appears the only one without a sheet is me. <laughs> there, okay. Thanks. <laughs> if you could share. <laughs> And to our congregation, Aneta Suomanen and Dallas Craven, newly elected. Ron Bjorgi and Greg Nyman, elected for a second term. And Paul Erlinson, appointed as congregational treasurer. If uh, you would take a step forward, please. Now, St. Paul writes these words. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit gives them. There are different ways of serving, but the same Lord is served. There are different abilities to perform service, but the same God gives to everyone ability for particular service. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way to each person for the good of all. Now, people, you have been elected and appointed to positions and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith reflect the message and way of Christ, the one, whose name we, in, the one in whom whose name we gather. You are to work together with other members to see that the worship and work of Christ are done in this congregation and that God's will is done in this community and in the world. You are to be diligent in your specific area of service and be an example of faith lived out in love and hope and endeavor to help maintain the life and harmony of this congregation. On behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, are you ready to accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been called? Yes. The congregation, please rise. Now you, the people of God in this congregation, I ask you, will you support these, your elected and appointed leaders? And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? If so, respond with, yes, by the help of God. I now declare you installed as council members and our congregational treasure for this congregation. God bless you with the Holy Spirit that you may find the encouragement and grace to serve. Amen. You may be seated. And actually, the congregation, actually, you may not be seated. Please stay standing for the prayers of the church. And as we gather together in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the whole world in need. We join our hearts and minds together in prayer. O oh, gracious God, our creator of the new covenant, you do make beautiful things and make them new. 
as the air gets warmer, as winter begins to wane, we know that spring comes. And yet, we know also, as in the words of Christ, that seeds going into the ground must first die so that the plant can live. You draw us into community, and it is a larger community that comes from you. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather, plant the new covenant of the gospel of Christ deep within our hearts, inspire all of us in our gifts, in our talents, in our willingness to serve. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God, of all that exists, you lavish the earth with, with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. Bring peace back to places like Ukraine, Gaza, Syria, Haiti, and many other places ravaged by war and destruction. Bring safety and community back to the children. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. O oh God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in hurtful places. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence, justice and peace, learning and support in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Now hear the prayers of each heart gathered today. Prayers for others and our own prayers of heart and mind. O oh God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, and on this day, especially St. Patrick, patron saint of Ireland, and for the many others, many who are not known as saints, but who still have lived their lives in faith, who are saints. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with one another. offering song <laughs> and our offering song today is create in me a clean heart And we 
us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, O Holy Spirit. Amen. Now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the feast is prepared for you. See you. 
scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared of your love as a grains of wheat once scattered on the hill were gathered into one to become our bread so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you let this be Stop.
Please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted of your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. And now, beloved of God, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join together in our sending hymn, The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve. Please be seated for a, a few announcements before the dismissal. Well, as we, uh, as we come to this week, just a reminder that we continue with uh, our Lenten uh, disciplines of uh, midweek, uh, midweek services. Our Holden Evening Prayer is on Wednesday at 7 o'clock here at Good Shepherd, and uh, we worship together every Wednesday evening through Lent with our Anglican brothers and sisters. Also, our Lenten Bible study continues on Fridays. That's from 1 o'clock to 2.30 uh, every Friday through Lent as well, and the theme is the scandal of Lent. And um, do come out this Friday, even if you haven't come out before. Um, certainly each session can stand alone, and everyone is welcome. The um, Holy Week schedule you have up there. And uh, just a note that on, on Wednesday from 12 noon to 1 o'clock, we're hosting uh, one of those midweek, or, or not midweek, Holy Week services. Um, it's a half an hour long service followed by a bit of lunch and fellowship with uh, people from all the various churches um, in town here. So do mark that off on your calendar and do come out if you can. The, um, if we go on to the next slide, please, Bill. Uh, yes, and then the three days, Monday, Thursday, uh, there will be a, a service in the evening. And that's at 7 o'clock over at St. Leonard's. Monday, Monday, Thursday is a time of uh, worship. There's a foot washing uh, event that takes place as a part of the service as well as Holy Communion. And that is together with our Anglican brothers and sisters as well. Good Friday, the service will be here at 11 a.m. Uh, please note the time, 11 a.m., and again, that's a service together with our, our Anglican brothers and sisters. And then Saturday evening at 8 o'clock at St. Luke's uh, downtown, we'll get together for the Easter Vigil. And we will move from light 
into the new day of Sunday, uh, marked by sundown on Saturday. Um, so that's 8 o'clock at St. Luke's. And then Easter Sunday celebration. Uh, that's coming up too. Please take note of that. That's here at Good Shepherd. Um, and that starts at the regular time of 1030. The, uh, on the three days session there too, the Good Friday service, we still do need a few people to help out with that service. We need uh, a worship assistant, uh, one more usher, and somebody to work the sound desk for us on that evening. So if you can do that, uh, there's a little sign-up sheet in the foyer on the, on the whiteboard. And so we're, all, all the help is, is especially appreciated. I think, is that all the announcements that we need to make? Just one more, and that's the dismissal, I guess. Unless there's, if I've missed anything, I don't think I have to. So if you would all please rise for the dismissal. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord.